Okay, so I haven't popped this off yet. I get more excited about this than presents on Christmas and my birthday, so anyway, uh, this could go uh, a number of different ways. It could be a beautiful finish, it could have pinholes all over it, um, you just never know. So it's kind of exciting to pull it off and see what it looks like. Um, if you did everything right, it should pull off without a lot of problems. Alright, so you can see there, um, this one turned out pretty good. I've got a few uh, little pinholes, but uh, nothing real, real serious there. Um, actually very pleased with that. So, now I just need to go ahead and draw out the, uh, the shape with the master template and, and cut it out. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get these, uh, these blocks out. Blocks are actually sometimes pretty hard to get out, but uh, we'll see how it goes. All right, so here's the long board after taking out the uh, blocks. Um, you can see where the blocks were because it's uh, it's shiny, and see right there along that rail, um, where it's matte here like this. This is where the pill ply was. So basically, I had the, uh, the rails in there, these blocks, and then um, the pill ply went over the top of that. So that's why that's shiny and that's a matte finish. The uh, pill ply was used to wick out some of the excess epoxy and that's why I wanted to use it against the board. Um, I've done it before where, it, where I just put uh, the plastic on here, but uh, it left a lot of the excess epoxy in there and made the board heavier. So that's the reason why I used the pill ply there. Um, the uh, truck mounting block came out no problem. As you can see here, these came out relatively easy, but I busted them when I pulled them out. So. Anyway, they served their purpose. They weren't that hard to make, so I'll make some new ones for the next board. So the next thing I've got to do now is cut this board out. So let me just give you a quick update on how this works. Basically, I've got my master template. And what I'll do is I'll find the center here of the board and line this up. If you remember on the, uh, the truck mount that we created, I put this center line on here. And so what will happen is, is you can kind of see where that, that mount is here. I will take, uh, take this carbon fiber and cut it off here. And then I'll find this center point and that becomes the center point for the template. So it'll line up like this, like this along that center line. And then I'll just take a, a Sharpie, a metallic silver Sharpie and trace this out and then use um, a diamond blade on an angle grinder and some Dremel tools to, to cut out the, uh, the shape and then use sanding tools like a uh, um, like a orbital sander or uh, a long block to go ahead and cut the rest of the board out. So anyway I'm gonna go to that point and then I'll show you what it looks like after it's cut out. Okay you can see right here where I'm tapping that there's a uh, uh, kind of like a dark spot that's the center point of the uh, the mounting plate that we stuck on here. So that's that little cutout that I was showing you. It filled up with some epoxy and it turned it uh, that black color. So there's one of those on each side. You can see here. There's one. Uh, it's hard to see unless it's in the sun. But basically I just take this uh, metallic silver sharpie and put a little dot um, right there on the center of that little black spot. And now I can line my template up. Um, you know, this runs the center lengthwise. And um, I can line that up. Now when I cut this off with the angle grinder, I usually move in with the sander until I just find that that black spot. And that tells me that I'm on the edge of the, uh, the plate. Since all my plates are the same, and the uh, foam core is the same, I know that 
that um, from that point to the center is going to be equal. So uh, this side and this side are now equal as long as I put the, uh, the template the same distance from that dot as it is from that dot. So hopefully that makes sense to you. So now what I got to do is go ahead and trace this out. All right, I finished uh, tracing this out and then I went ahead and cut it. Uh, I used an angle grinder and then a belt sander and then a palm sander to sand this down. So basically I do a rough cut with the angle grinder. Um, I leave a little gap so there's just a little bit left over from the line. Um, that way I can go back with the belt sander and, and hit that line and it'll make it a lot closer than, than the angle grinder. And then after I use the belt sander, I'll go back through and use a palm sander and just uh, make everything nice and smooth. This uh, tape here that I've got, um, it's on the center section. Uh, I have a tendency to be a little bit rough with the boards when I'm when I'm sanding them. So you know, if it's bumping against the saw horses or or whatever I'm um, using to to rest the board on while I'm sanding, I don't want it to have any any marks in it. So that's the reason why I've got this tape on there.